And the last type of rock um, are the ones that you see pictured in a lot of places because people love to show the, um, the strata or the lines. And so sedimentary, the process is usually in a lake or a slow moving river, and it would have to be something slow, has time for all of the little pieces of rock, little minerals and, and things to settle down and create the bottom of the bed. Then over time, another layer is going to come in and it's gonna drop down. So what are those layers gonna be? It depends um, what is present at the time. So, and you can go back and you can see what the environment was that it was formed in, depending on what it looks like. One of those uh, indications is this kind of, can I show this maybe? This kind of, if I hold this, it seems to do better. There, <laughs> I don't know why it blocks something. Um, so this is a uh, bunch of shells that have been stuck together. So this would be a tropical or a um, marine environment at one point. And that doesn't mean that it's always a marine environment. If you look at um, Rochester, New York, you go out and look at some of the layers of sedimentary rocks and you'll see areas where they have shells and they'll have this kind of, uh, of rock. And you'll know that once upon a time, it had to have been underwater to create that, all right? So this is called coquina. If I was to take this and put acid on this one, just like I did with the calcite, it would also bubble. So that's an indication that it was, it was once a seashell. Okay? All right. We have one question. Yes. Do you recommend using larger sedimentary models or the pieces you show us now? It depends on how many, first of all, what do you want to do with it? and how many people are in your class. What's nice about this is that since they are, um, they're more economical, they're not as pretty as a rock, they're, you're not bigger, maybe don't have as much of the crystal sizes, but you can have every student touching one of these. Whereas the other one, when they are, you know, you can't buy as many, um, every student can't necessarily kind of be playing with their own set, which is, is uh, Definitely a value. Um, this is a sandstone, which you normally actually also have seen. Well, there. This is commonly used to show uh, sedimentary because you can see the lines and how it was laid, how it was laid out as well. Uh, also, in sedimentary, are the only kind of rocks that you're going to find fossils in, because metamorphic with the temperature and the pressure. And with the melting of the igneous, neither of those are going to have any fossils in them. So sedimentary are really exciting because, you know, the kids will go and they'll, or you'll go to a quarry where there's sedimentary ro rocks and they're digging out little old brachiopods and things and they're finding little shells and little crinoids and all kinds of uh, different fossils or pieces of fossils. That's kind of exciting to them too. All right. That's all there is about rocks. Uh, and like I said, this also lists on the next one, the collection showing sandstone, all the conglomerates, some of the, the bits that I've talked about. And I've picked arbitrary, like a random classification of sedimentary rocks, but you can certainly take this set and go through the same process and make it so that, is it a rock? Is it a mineral? Is it, um, is it jagged? Is it rounded pieces? Jagged is breccia, rounded is conglomerate. And just like I said with the uh, others, you can, it's a good selection process to teach students to um, distinguish between differences.